Hello, my name is Muhammad Al Birgawan, and in this video, I will present my analysis of Tony Harrison's poem Marx Witty using a literary theory approach, namely Marxist criticism. Here, I use the title The Voice of a Baker's Child to the Capitalist World in Mark Witty by Tony Harrison. A little bit, I will discuss about the issue of class conflict, which is often mentioned by Karl Marx himself in his writings. Still again, let's start the discussion from the first then I will share an overview of what Marxist criticism is the best on my knowledge and how it relates to the poetry analyzed this time. Marxism is a social, political, and economic theory originated by Karl Marx that focuses on the struggle between capitalists and the working class. Marx wrote that the power relationship between capitalists and workers were inherently exploitative and would inevitably create class conflict. He believed that this conflict would ultimately lead to a revolution in which the working class would overthrow the capitalist class and seize control of the economy. The theory of Marxism was initiated by Karl Marx with the aim of criticizing of exploitative actions of the bourgeoisie against the proletariat in capitalism. Marxist criticism plays a literary work within the context of class and assumption about class. A premise of Marxist criticism is that literature can be viewed as ideological and that it can be analyzed in terms of a base or superstructure model. Karl Marx argues that the economic means of production within society account for the base. A base determines its superstructure. Human institution and ideologies, including those relevant to patriarchy, that produce art and literary texts comprise the superstructure. Marxist criticism thus emphasizes class, socioeconomic status, power relation among various segments of society, and the representation of those segments. Marxist literary criticism is valuable because it enables readers to see the role that class plays in the plot of a text. In conclusion, the key points of Marxist criticism are as followed. Number one, social structures are built from oppression of workers. Number two, classes have different interests that cause conflict. Number three, the text reflecting class ideology. And the last, number four, characters or representations reflecting class ideology. And before entering the discussion section, I will try to explain how class conflict occurs. This discussion will be a bit comprehensive considering the topic I raise is also called class conflict. The key to understand Marx is his class definition. A class is defined by the ownership of property. Such ownership vests a person with the power of exclude others from the property and to use it for personal purposes. In relation to property, there are three great classes of society, the bourgeoisie, who own the means of production such as machinery and factory buildings and whose source of income is profit. Number two, landowners whose income is rent. And number three, the, the proletariat who own their labor and sell it for a wage. Class thus is determined by property, not by income or status. These are determined by distribution of and consumption, I mean which itself ultimately reflects the production and power relations of class. The social condition of bourgeoisie production are defined by bourgeois property. Class is therefore a theoretical and formal relationship among individuals. The force transforming Latin class membership into a struggle classes is class interest. Out of similar class situations, individuals come to act similarly. They develop a mutual dependence, a community, a shared interest, interrelated with common income of profit or wages. From this common interest, classes are formed, and for months, individuals form classes to the extent that their interests engage them in a struggle with the opposite class. Finally, the division between classes will be widened and the condition of exploited worker will be deteriorated so badly that social structure collapse. The class struggle is transformed into a proletarian revolution. The workers' triumph uh, will eliminate the basis of class division in property through the public ownership of the means of production. 
with the basis of classes the swept away, a class Plus society will ensue, or by definition, and since the political power to protect the bourgeoisie against the workers is unnecessary, political authority and the state will wither away. And for this discussion section, I'm going to try to put it straight sentence by sentence and try to interpret it. So let's get started. Uh, the first part of the poem is about someone's body being burnt or cremated. Tooth myth. It is a metaphor that his father has died, and often, but the often here is mean to crematorium. And next, the word cataract here can indicate that his father had poor eyesight, but in his death, his father could see again, see his dead wife. And then next, forms a meaning mentions to name of his wife. And then next, this seems like a quote from his father. Though the name Florence has revived in popularity for the generations of the poet's parents, it was a common name among working class communities usually shortened to Flory or Flu. This is places the poet and his family in a clear social context. And next, the meaning of the sentence here describes his father's called Tonju burying in the crematorium. And next, the sentence, in heaven, this will be different, except that Horizon believed uh, that there is no heaven to be reached. The only fire is the crematorium fire, the appearance of the word sorry uh, and a break at the end of the line to form a cesura is used as an emotional suppression and is the only indication of sadness, might be stronger to be underestimated. This is reference to God's prayer, give us today the daily bread. The daily bread is a metaphor for spiritual sustenance. Harrison like finding his spiritual support on earth rather than heaven. The reference to bread is doubly appropriate in the context of his father's work as a break, as a baker. And next, mortal speech keep him down reflects how he treated by society and how he suffered from what society says about him. A Tongju like wage like that like left is a metaphor for how Harrison's father felt about negative words from society that he could not hear. This verse is related to next sentence, a banquet that no one will ever see rise up in England made to feel like a stupid fool. Harrison's father was seen as a fool meaning loser or fool. He is basically disliked by society or a person. Smoke and ash are the result of burning cremated bodies. Smoke also blinds and obscures suggestions, perhaps of the restrictive society system of developing and educating humans. The smoke that stings one eyes can be a metaphor for tears of sadness. In the end, one small loaf exists as a metaphor for the poet's father who have been cremated or the result of cremation. The mood of the poem is set. It lacks life. Then from this analysis, from this analysis I mean, uh, I, we, we come to know that British society or England society at the time really looked down on the lower, on the lower classes. So I can say, I can also conclude here that the point of view of the poet or character reflected in his poetry or story is that the proletariat. And my conclusion, oh, I sorry, uh, the conclusion is this poem is elegy or a lament for the dead, for his father, for sure, uh, who has a beggar, I mean, who was a beggar. The dove is marked with a D for death. Depictions relating to packing and bread are woven through the poem, progressing from sadness to anger. The smooth flow is supported by long sentences and framed lines. The dominant image is dove and cake. The theory of Marxism was initiated by Karl Marx with the aim of criticizing, criticizing exploitative action of bourgeoisie against the proletariat in capitalism. For the welfare of the proletariat, Marx accused that the notion of capitalism needs to be replaced with the notion of communism. If this condition continues according to Marx, the proletariat must default and demand justice. 
Uh, I think that's all for my presentation this time. I hope what I say can be understood and become enlightenment for people who previously didn't understand. Thank you for your attention and have a nice day.